Hey, welcome to Flight Test, I'm Josh, and today we're gonna to be showing you guys how to modify your Simple Storage. Now, if you watch a Simple Storage video and the build video, you know there's a lot of different configurations you can have for that. Where in the build video, we only specified one. Today, we're gonna to be showing you how to do leading edge slats, how to put flaps on your machine, some uh, different trips and tricks with painting and putting decals on, and also how to do some different program setups on your radio. The first one that most people are wanting to know about is these leading edge slats. Now the leading edge slats are phenomenal for slowing down your plane about 25%, but one thing you gotta keep in mind, you wanna do this with the flap around conversion because you need all the aileron authority you can get, and also this is not for beginners. If you're not skilled with flying the uh, motor and, and, and being prepared to manage your throttle well, don't go with this mod until you're thoroughly comfortable with the plane because when this thing drops, it's gonna drop hard, but it's a very fun mod to do. Now, if you've got the kit or the plane, Plans, it simply can be done with a popsicle stick and a couple of rectangles and squares of foam. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is to uh, establish the angle on your leading edge slat. This is simply done by applying the little uh, square spacers on the back side of your groove. Now to open up your groove of your 50% score cut, which is your red line, simply go ahead and drag your popsicle stick through that groove and then coat it with a bead of glue inside the groove and then raise it up with your little spacers. Let that thoroughly dry and keep equal pressure on your whole entire slat the whole way across. Once you get your leading edge slat glued, uh, go ahead and take your spacer and run your popsicle stick through uh, that spacer. Cut the leading edge of that popsicle stick off so you no longer have to deal with a round edge, but a blunt edge. And then use that blunt edge to open up the gap on your wing to allow you to glue your spacer and your uh, popsicle stick in. Once you're done with that, cut it about a half inch or about a centimeter and a half away. You want plenty of room, you can always trim that back later. Repeat that step three times over all the way across your leading edge slats so you have your spacer and your popsicle stick using as a peg to go into your wing. The next is to test fit your uh, leading edge slat into your wing. Uh, you're gonna notice that there's no slats pre-cut into your wing because a lot of people may not want this, but you will see two tiny laser cut dots or on your plans, two little reference marks. Go ahead and complete the cut with your uh, razor blade going all the way through down through the bottom of the wing. Once you're happy with that, open up just a little bit with the rest of your popsicle stick that you have left over. Once you've done that in all three slots, go ahead and push your leading edge slat down through with the edge that doesn't have the spacer protruding forward. Now, if you want to make this easily removable, I'd strongly recommend not gluing this in permanently because there's going to be times that you're going to want to take it off. Uh, what I would recommend is taking a drop of hot glue while it's still hot, putting it over the slot, and then pass your popsicle stick down through and then pull it through the bottom. What this is going to do is leave a little bit of glue around that slot and give it a nice rubbery texture so it can actually grip really well and make it removable in the future. Now, if you're not gonna go with leading edge slats, one mod you can also do is go with separate ailerons and flaps. Now, this gives you a very exciting envelope and also some advanced uh, programmable features like Crow. Not sure what benefit it'd give you, but it's always nice to have that. For your flaps, you are gonna need a Y harness. Uh, the Y harness is actually gonna connect your two servos. Both the servos are actually offset from each other, so you don't have to do any servo mixing and take up two channels. You only need one, but you will need a Y harness for this. Uh, to install your flaps, all you simply need to do is take the four points of reference on the bottom of your wing and cut that out with your X-Acto knife. That's going to open up a nice cavity for your servo to lay sideways. With your servo centered up and the linkage stopper if you wish, go ahead and mark where you're going to need to cut your two grooves for your flanges to pass through that cavity. Uh, just go ahead and press that down, let it move two little indents, and then go back with your razor blade and clear that area off. Make sure your servo arm lines up directly with the control horn. Make sure you pass your servo lead through the wing and into the center cavity before you glue it down. You can also fish this out with a little piece of wire. Once you're happy with the fit and your servo is screwed in, go ahead and take a little bit of glue and glue down your servo into the wing. The next step you're gonna to wanna to do is take some uh, push rod. Now you should have extra in your kit if you bought a kit and put a Z-Bend on the very end of that. Pass your push rod through your servo arm, either through the linkage stopper or do a, uh, a Z-Bend on the very end and then take it back over the hinge line of your control horn. Our next step is to install the push rod between your servo arm and your control horn. Now during this time, it's a wise move to keep your servo on the outer level, keeping the whole entire flap straight. That way you don't have to fight with making adjustments. Once you got it where you like it, go ahead and glue down your control horn. Now before you glue your control horn in, you're gonna wanna set that end, open up your cavity like you normally do. But also make sure you take your razor blade and clear out the foam area where the control horn is gonna need to be bend forward. You're gonna go through two layers of foam, but don't go through the top layer of foam. Simply clear it so you have full deflection. Then cut your flap free from your aileron. This will now give you independent flaps and ailerons. I also recommend getting a little about a 16th inch gap between your aileron and your flap so it doesn't have any binding in the future. Now one thing a lot of people struggle with is your flap system or flap on system. Now the first thing you're going to want to enable for your flap system is to enable flaps. So if you're doing individual flaps and ailerons, you're going to need to turn your flap system on. Now on the DX8s, 9s, and 18s, uh, this is all very, very simple. All you're going to simply do is go ahead and access your main menu with your rolly dial, 
scroll down to flap system and then enable it. Normally, what you'll see is an inhibited switch just like this. Simply scroll to that inhibited switch and then roll it to the actual dial you want. I want flaps. When you do so, you're going to have parameters that you can then adjust. What I like is 0 for normal, 50, and 75. And you're going to have to play with this to get it where you want. This is where you're going to turn on your machine and literally dial it in and get the throws you want. Along with the elevator you're going to see is different parameters for that. The reason being is the more flaps you give, oftentimes you've got to compensate with down elevator. This way you can go ahead and dial it in ahead of time. Now if you're doing your flap around system, you do need to go ahead and access a different main menu on this. Simply hold down your rolly dial, turn your radio on, and then roll down to wing type. Once you've done that, make sure that your wing type is set to flapper on. You also have settings like dual aileron, normal. Flapper on is the one you want. Now one thing that we found out is Peter had a, a real difficult time painting these windows. They're very complicated. He did an amazing job. We wanted to make it easier and do vinyl decals. Now these decals have something called transfer tape on them. What transfer tape is going to do is have enough adhesion to be able to pull the sticker and keep its uh, orientation on the transfer tape and then when we apply it to the fuselage we'll be able to pull off the transfer tape and it'll leave the main sticker. So before we do that though we're going to go ahead and cut out our main areas and to do that we're going to just cut out our main windows at a time. You don't need to go right up against the edge and then there's our other side and I'm going to cut the front window off of this as well too. Now before we go much further I'm going to take out things like these wing dowels and also the front skewer to make this whole process a little bit easier. To apply your decals, make sure that your fuselage is in a place that's comfortable for you. And go ahead and just do a dry fit. Now I like to keep about a quarter inch from this very top edge here and you can see that I'm actually impacting some areas. So I'm going to go ahead and relieve those areas so I can get it exactly where I'd like it to be. I also want to see about a quarter of an inch from the leading edge here. So I'm simply going to remove this area right here. Now line that right up with our fuselage. Like that. Once I'm happy with this fit, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the transfer tape is sticking nice and firm. I'm going to peel this off. If it starts pulling any of the edges up, you can simply go down and then re-release it. It works pretty well. I'm going to carefully snake this through. And once again, I'm keeping about a quarter of an inch about three quarters of a centimeter from the edge. And once I'm happy with that, I'm going to tack down the edge and press it down. Go ahead and just use this razor blade to squeeze you down real hard. At this point, you don't want to lift it up. If you lift it up, you're going to be leaving your, your decal. There's really no going back. Now that our decal is pressed down, we're going to simply at a sharp angle start rolling back the transfer tape and revealing the decal. All right, we're going to repeat the exact same process on the other side. So let's go to the front window now. The front window, we're going to set this bottom edge right down against the crease on the bottom of the fuselage window. But also, I'm going to go ahead and trim this back, kind of give us a better perspective. I'm going to trim this right up against the decal so we can get all the way at the very, very bottom. I'm going to go ahead and seat this right on the very bottom and let it meet right at the very top. Same process as the side window. Once you're happy with that, just a light touch. And go back and seat it down in there. And we'll follow up and just peel off the transfer tape once again. Our goal is to give the simulation of tubes running all around the window. So you're going to have a little bit of relief all the way around just to give the window a three-dimensional look. For the wing, we're going to lay the wing on top and we're going to center this up right along with the center of the line of our fuselage. This is very important because from this point on, you're not going to be able to see the center of your wing. We're going to follow the same process as we did before. We're peeling this back. The X is going to go towards the nose and the circle is going to go towards the trailing edge. Now we're going to carefully line this up and we're going to leave once again a little bit of a gap on the very leading edge to give a simulation of a cross tube. You can drastically change the look of your planes just by changing the shape of the windows as well too. So if you want to give this more of a civilian fun cub look, you can easily go ahead and put on some civilian windows and change the whole entire look of the plane. 
Another common thing people have been requesting is how to paint these planes. There's been great articles in the past on different techniques, obviously min waxing, but spray cans can also be a really good medium for painting your planes. Peter has come on board with this recently and he's a phenomenal paint artist and a lot of people have difficulty with this. So we're gonna actually show you how Peter paints our planes. First, I'm gonna start with some tips of like what not to do and then what to do. We're never ever gonna go and use black first and then mask it and then try to put yellow or some lighter color over it because it looked like this. You'll see results there. It looks pretty awful. Another thing we're gonna touch on is always use light coats. Don't hose it on because when you hose it on, it starts to delaminate the paper. It'll start to dissolve things. The foam will start to melt. Things will start to fall apart. So this is the way to do it. First, we spray painted yellow on there. We didn't worry about masking this off, so we just coated the whole area in yellow. And you always, always, always wanna do light coats. About maybe two to two to three coats is about the right number. You can always go four or five if you're using something really acidic. And then we put a piece of masking tape on here. And then we spray paint on the red because the red's a darker color. So that worked pretty good there. You can see the edge line is pretty sharp. We pulled the tape off in about 10 minutes or so. Don't wait too long to pull that off. So what the tape I kind of use is the uh, blue painter's tape. We don't use like masking tape or any harsher tapes. One thing we do is we take it, stick it to our shirts to try to pull off the lint and whatnot, just so it's less tacky because the paper is on here kind of light. And if you do have it too sticky, when you try to pull it off, you'll peel the paper off with it. So the spray cans I use are the Valspar ones. I kind of like the Valspar ones a lot. This is the most foam safe one of off the shelf brands you can get. The cans are about like three or four bucks a piece. So you guys are gonna break the bank trying to use these things. Some of the other colors I like are the Rust-Oleum cans. But this stuff's a bit more acidic. It colors a lot nicer and the colors are a little bit more deeper, I think. But when you try to spray on the foam, it tries, it tends to eat into the raw exposed parts. So always go lighter on the Rust-Oleum. So in the episode, the storage I painted, I, I planned this out pretty well ahead of time. Like I put the light colors on first, like the, uh, the kind of like sky blue stuff. This is also Valspar, I believe, this blue color paint stuff. And then I put on the, uh, the waffles. And then I spray painted beyond the uh, darker sort of olive drab color. So you can kind of see how I, how I plan that ahead. So always plan ahead too before you start painting. Like for the windows too, I plan ahead in this case. I put like, uh, I got the two inch version of this masking tape. I put it on the windows and then I cut the windows out with the X-Acto knife and I lifted off the pieces of tape I didn't want. And then I spray painted the olive drab color on. That's why these are really, really white. And also for some of the details too, this is just spray, paint, spray, uh, spray cans. I just sprayed them with a little plastic two ounce cup stuck a paintbrush in and just freehanded it on there. Friends, I want to sincerely thank you for watching. I want to thank you for being part of the flight test community. And please, if there's anything that hasn't been answered, go to our forums. There's an amazing amount of knowledge in our forums. And to ask that question, we have an amazing community that will be happy to answer your questions. Also, let us know other tips and tricks that you'd like to see that we oftentimes do on the show but don't always explain. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.